Hello and welcome to the Stanley Parable. <clears throat> For now, this shall be a demonic rip plays. Let us begin the game. The ending is never. The ending is never. The ending is loading. I mean the end, not the ending. Don't you dare contradict me. Oh God! While this game loads, I'm gonna get a swig of my Pepsi. Where is it? Is it? Oh, here it is. There we go. That's good. Some good stuff, Pepsi. Whew. There. Must have got some stray flesh there. God, this is taking forever to load. Then again, the Stanley Parable is a very big game. Very big. Not big on a download, though. But quite the remarkable game. I mean, it's indie. It's a mod of. It's a. It's a. Um. Uh, what would you call it? A full remake of a mod, which was actually very good as well. And there are so many more opportunities. To do with this game, I mean, they can make a Stanley Parable 2. And they could just continue on with the same thing that they've done because the the comedy is so good. I mean, of course, if they repeated what they did before, that would ruin it. But anyway, the game is loaded and I should finish my Pepsi. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Big number. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Ooh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Now this is the game of choice, as I like to call it. You get to do anything you want within the game's bound lines. See, there's like... I mean, one of the... the co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, this game is full of really neat little jokes. I mean, one of the achievements right here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Oh, it's because I've already got the achievement, sorry. Um, basically, you click that door five times, and it gets you to do a load of other things. Just adding to the humor of the game, really. But here's the first choice. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now, here's the thing. If you choose the option that goes all the way, if you follow the narrator entirely, the game is very short, so let's not follow the narrator. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I think you can actually see an employee walk down there if you're fast enough. I've seen it before, but I just can't remember when, or what happened ah, before. Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Well, let's follow the narrator and see what he says. I stood here, drinking it up. 
Also, when you want to select... Yes. Oh. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Ever so worth it. Every time you click or press E, it's a click, it's a typing sound for some reason. At also, this point, ooh. Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Hey, don't you insult me for liking a room. This room is amazing. I mean, it's got coffee in it. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. Dad. When a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Coffee nut. What's this say? Uh, can't really read that. That cup's facing the wrong way. Uh, f fuel? Huh. Pretty bland. What else is there? We got drinks. Almost a trademark, pe trademark Pepsi. Third one down there. Just missing the white line down the middle. There's that. Nice leaves. Too bad there's no little Easter eggs on these little things here. Well, let's just leave. He's not saying anything. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Hmm. Do I? Don't I? Ah, uh, let's just leave it. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Hey, shut up! Don't lie. If you're lying right now, stop. Okay, okay. I'm a girl. Can you tell by my voice that I'm a girl? <laughs> Ugh, God, I really don't do the deep voice well. What's in here? A high blue jay. Shy. Ooh. Nothing around here. Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. It will cause death. Penalty for misuse of the cargo lift is is um one thousand pounds dollars. Wait a minute, what? I thought this was English. Nah, never mind. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, five thousand. Hmm. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Hmm. I've got I'm five thousand to spare. Really, I'm not. I think I, I do. Realize that investing in your trust in someone else. Five thousand dollars. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good <laughs> job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> this game, I love the comedy. It, this this humor, it's so good. Okay, that text box is just stuck there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. You know, let's go to the meeting room. No harm in... What the... What the... Wait. Wait. Wait, what? What's going on? Okay, that was different. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors... Okay, I'm not gonna judge this game. Door on his left. I'm not going to question you, game. I I'm not gonna question you. Oh. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda. <laughs> Wait, what? For tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda and reflect. What? The future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. What? Oh god, that's a riddle. Not cost efficient. Standard graphics 40 wide. Uh, push for funding for R&D of new coffee machine. Get Chris out of the bathroom closet. But I like being in the bathroom closet. I mean broom closet. Wait a minute. Oh, that. So, sorry. I just had a really weird speculation. Who moved my desk? What the... Hire someone to fire the papers. What the? Hire someone to synergize the papers. Papers are too synergized. F fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Please keep the targets to the next topic of. And it's smudged. 
Well, that's very weird. What else is around this room? T a lot of percentage. Space between the teenagers. Size of the demographic and teenagers. Throw something in the ideas bin. Uh, no more room in the bins. Remain out of ideas. Wow. Talk less. Eh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this game's got a lot of things to it. Oh yeah, if you're standing there for ages, something happens and it ends up boarded up. Don't bother. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Down there is a very weird um, ending, so I'm not gonna go down there. Unless you want to see more of this in the in the Let's Play, which I may or may not do. There's no way to the executive bathroom. So what's here? Um, nothing on this desk. Is there something here? You can't even open those doors. Weird. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley hey. was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It's that Shocked, man from the icon. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? Hmm. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two... Eight four five, but of course, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing! I know, he right? Stepped into the newly opened passageway. Cause I am that smart. Now this is very weird. You push this, and blood appears. I mean, I don't know. I, I, that might be just lighting and red lighting, but I think that's blood. In a sense. I'm probably very wrong with that. And you're all gonna hate on me for saying that. Cause, you know, YouTubers are so nice. I mean, YouTube commenters are so nice. They just want to share their love and hatred everywhere. For no reason, of course. Into the building, oh. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Well, that makes Why sense. Did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Oh, really? Okay. Moving on, we got things Stanley to do. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm, if I go through there, I think there's only two endings. I'm gonna see what's going on down here. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Wait, do I go down? I the can door go back. Him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Oh yeah, it's the useless pole that does nothing that I keep seeing around the building. I mean, it goes from there up and le and stops. Uh. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yeah, it gets very weird. Oh, oh. Oh god. Oh. I don't want to walk down there. Geronimo! Wait, it's loading? It's lo- Oh yeah! Loading. Loading the game. Gas is loading. Okay, what's next? And how does anyone survive that? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, oh God. he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story. Well, God. Trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. You can't jump. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! 
Huh? Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. A In female a narrator. In a visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. I'm surprised if it didn't. Well, there I go. Oh. Hmm. What's down here? No, nothing down here. What's down here? The Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh, ye oh when God, that's bright. you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Those are some very deep words. Hey, look, it's my computer. Can I push buttons on it? I want to push buttons. The office layout. Oh, God, this is going to be an episode of reading. The blueprint showed that the office building from the beginning of the game, the path starts off two doors, uh, although the film and of through the claw layout remain almost identical to the first um, iteration. So this is actually quite identical to the one in the G's, in the guys mod parody, uh, mod. The corridor that leads up to the dual room. Some doors, a desk, buttons with different sounds. Well, that's weird. Hey, it's the credits. Original music, or additional voice work. I assume Leslie. Uh, uh, Avia and Jenny were all the narrator that we just heard. Probably not all, but no Steam support. Ah, oh, Kevin Brighton as the narrator. He is so amazing. Hey, we got some computers here. Who leaves their computers on? Some filing cabinets. I think we might just explore the museum a bit more before we. Ooh, that was a bit of a trait. That's a big change from the boss's office. From that and that to that. See, it screens from the development of the boss's office. The clock. What's in here? What's up there? Oh, that looks like the escape. What's this? The lounge. The underground. Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. Escape. I think that would have been more unused. Narration outtakes? Huh? I heard him for a minute there. I keep hearing him. Okay. We recorded the dialogue of the entire game roughly three separate times over two years of development. Huh. If anyone wants to come back and listen to that, that's where it is. Just follow what I did. And you'll get to hear unused text from the game. The freedom ending. Spoils. Um, countdown desk. What are the desks from an early version of the countdown ending? The freedom ending, if freedom ending is existed in the beta, well, that looks pretty crap compared to the actual ending. That's the exit. That's the countdown room. And that's the elevator from the monitor room that we avoided earlier ago. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. So what? How they both wish to be free. I am free. Eh. And the game restarts. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Really now? But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. 
So if I press escape and quit, I'm just going to restart to the beginning of the game. You know, fuck that. Don't choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. Ouch. Every ending I've got, I've died so far. This is annoying. I've really got to stop picking endings that involve my death. So is the game going to change? You know, I'm just going to get another swig of my Pepsi while the game decides to work. Is anything happening? I can't see anything. Is the game working? Ah. So it doesn't look like it's working, so begin the game again. That is weird. How they get you to restart the game compulsory, like. But it looks like nothing has changed. And that's all I'll be displaying to the Stanley Parable because this game is amazing. So I guess I shall quit to the menu like the woman wanted me to. And also, weird menu. Whoa! You can even see the you can even see the Steam overlay. I think. Yeah, you can. Anything that appears on the screen can appear. Even the fraps counter, which you won't be able to see it up here, but you will be able to see it down here. That is weird. Anyway. See you in the next Demonic Brick Plays or Let's Play or whatever I do. See ya.